Buffy spokesperson, did you see this? Who's now put her account into protection, but was coming up behind everybody's posts over the weekend and saying, shoot them, shoot them all, shoot them all, like repeatedly. Have you seen this? Was this a police officer or just a person? It was a spokesperson for the police officers union. A an I, attorney note. I did um, not see this. this. I retweeted it. If you want to go to my Twitter, I retweeted some of it because it's incredible. You read these posts and you're like, considering they spent the entire weekend absolutely literally just nonstop shooting people with rubber bullets. Uh, this is really an incredible and irresponsible thing to say. All right, here, I'm going to your Twitter right now. We'll take a look at this yeah, together. People need to see this because this is, it's shocking. You're like, wow, you're saying this stuff in public. You're not, here's the thing that surprises me, Ron. They're not even thinking about finding their edit button because they don't see anything wrong with what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, how yeah. far gone they are. Well, so wait, so okay. how far is down is this? Am, uh, am I close? Did I get a little pretty crazy today? Uh, it was yesterday, I think. You're getting close under the videos. There it is, right there. This is, it? this is it? This up one, the screenshots. Oh. There you go, right there. See them? Yeah, open up some of those. People should read these. It's it's crazy. Okay. Okay. Shoot the protesters. Shoot the protesters. Wow. wow. They need to be shot. shot. Can't wait. At last, a reason to shoot them. Oh, my God. Yeah, and there was plenty more, but she protected her account and started deleting them when they started getting uh, some attention. I am not a lawyer, but I do know a, a little bit about the free speech laws in the United States. And I know for a fact that there are nine things that aren't protected. One of them is a call to incite violence. Like, like, like inciting violence is not protected under free speech laws. That's why when Trump did that thing about like looting and shooting where uh, he was quoting one of the great racists of the past, uh, that... Might not have been. I mean, he may have violated free speech laws. I can't, you know, a, a constitutional lawyer needs to make that uh, ruling. But he may have violated free speech laws there. Like, he totally might have. Calling for yeah, violence it's, towards it's, his own people. Yeah, is one of the, is one of the only um, exemptions to First Amendment rights. And actually, one of the things I said to the police officer was, "Don't why don't you believe in First Amendment rights? I think I might have said asshole, too, actually, at that point. I was really angry. Because two things are happening here. They are infringing on, wait, what just happened? Ron, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you not hear me? Oh, so. Yeah, for some reason, my monitor with you on it went, went, went away. It just went blank for a second. Yeah. Probably can Russia. I can see oh, you right. and hear you just fine. Oh, okay, perfect then. That's fine. Um, but the, the point being that two things are, are, are at play here. The first is your right to protest. That is ingrained in the First Amendment. Every citizen has a right to take up his grievances with the government, right? That is that is tantamount and it's, it's necessary if you want a healthy democracy. The second is going after the press. Right. We should right. all understand that once you come for the journalists, it's all over because who's going to document this stuff? You're not going to know what really happened. This is how you really cross over into fascism, which is why I'm hoping that I'm hoping the fact that mainstream media journalists endured on Saturday what some of us have endured, endured in the past in silence on our own because we're smaller journalists. We don't work for CBS or MSNBC, right? Yeah. We've yeah. seen this stuff happen. I've been arrested twice. So this is nothing new. But the fact that it's now happening to mainstream media journalists, somebody from MSNBC, somebody from NBC, somebody from CBS. And they're this, still doing a horrific job. They're that's, still doing a horrific job. Do you think still, this would make them more I mean, that's why, that you know, when CNN, I mean, CNN has already tried to downplay what happened. Uh, right. they're, they're already, oh, he had these underlying health conditions. He had this. And, and it is just nonsense because they're hoping, they're hoping, you know what they're hoping for? They're hoping that this cop gets charged with involuntary manslaughter. That's what they're trying for. And the media is being complicit and helping them with it. That is that is that is straight up propaganda for the status quo. That is that is what that is. They are being mouthpieces for the establishment in the most deceptive, deliberative way possible. And Jake Tapper, when does he uh, clutch his pearls? He clutches his pearls when a bunch of people start chanting against Fox News, says that's a violation of freedom of the press. Guess what, Jake Tapper? Freedom of the press refers to the freedom of the press 
to pursue information without authoritarian persecution, i.e. someone like Tina should be able to film and document a protest without getting her windshield shot out and tear gas thrown at her. That's what freedom of the press refers to. Freedom of the press does not refer to citizens aren't allowed to criticize their shit media. That's not what, so Jake Tapper demonstrated right he there. does You're not right understand there. what freedom of the press is. He is a corporate mainstream stuff. journalist. He doesn't yeah. know what it is. Yeah, 100% agree with you. Free speech is a contract between us and the government. So him getting criticism, yeah, no, dude, that's not it. You deserve the criticism. And let's be clear, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these pundits that are on cable news, et cetera, they don't really, this is a really important thing to consider. I don't think they really consider themselves to be journalists. Well, they, know they're, they're not. they know they're doing punditry. They, they know they're doing commentary. There's a reason that these folks aren't willing to get out there in the field and do what I did on Saturday. It's dangerous. It's not mm. comfortable. It's not glamorous. It's, you know, it's it, not. So they want to sit in their armchair and just, you know, get paid a six pontificate and get a six, six figure salary and really have no clue about what's going on. And I've conversed with many of these folks, um, in particular, you know, I when I was on the road in Iowa and um, some of the other states during the primaries, obviously you're in you're in proximity of a lot of the mainstream media journalists as well. And I had conversations with a lot of these folks. Most of them really are pretty damn clueless about this stuff because they haven't they've for long forgotten what it's like to be out in the field, and they have no desire to return to it, which makes me wonder really where their passion was to begin with. Or then you have the other folks that uh, just started out being a TV personality and wanted to remain that way, you know, which is fine. But at least if you're going to do that, at least um, be concerned with having a, a commitment to veracity and talk to the folks that are actually out there in the field doing this stuff and get the right information. Don't pontificate about bullshit you don't understand. I'm with you. That's, thank you for attending my TED Talk. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? Get your news on with Ron. Don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together.